you know produce doesn't last long nowadays they pick it they try to pick it right so you don't get your flavor and then it doesn't last long it might be on the shelf at the store for a week or so so if you don't use it right away it goes bad quickly and this is a way to keep those fruits and vegetables from going into the landfills so not only are you making your own fertilizer you're helping the environment reduce waste reducing the waste that's going into the landfills so this bluegill I caught on my very first cast in a farm pond on a red wiggler and it was two pounds four ounces <laughs> and I thought here we go but that was the first one started off with a bang and then this one was 2.1 and then this one was 115 I believe and that one's like 114 and then we caught several more <laughs> right there you have size. four fish of a lifetime for <laughs> pretty much any any pan fisherman so I had to get that get so those mounted I do have a serious best bluegill bait besides your worms what is the best bluegill bait in your opinion uh, worms are the best <laughs> but if I couldn't pick a worm it would have to probably be a cricket a cricket so definitely natural bait is what you would natural, use natural for sure unreal man so the biggest one is two two point four two point four or two pounds four ounces so well <laughs> that's like two and a quarter okay it's insane i mean those are definitely the ones that you can lip oh yeah <laughs> for those who don't know grant well introduce yourself i'm grant mcintosh i like to fish of course and i do a lot of hunting and i raise worms definitely a lot of hunting this is like a, a wall of fame right here and which one is your favorite from the hunting is it deer hunting or turkey hunting which one would you It'd say have to be waterfowl, waterfowl? whether it's ducks or geese i deer hunt from october 1st when bow season comes in right up to the day duck season opens on thanksgiving day every year and after that i'm done deer hunting if i haven't gotten a deer by thanksgiving i'm not getting one once again, I want to thank Grant for welcoming me in his home. I'm out here in Metropolis just for several hours today on my way to Clearwater, Florida. We did a quick uh, video for our Fishy Jobs series where he introduced me to his worm farm. I'm going to be on my way. Once again, thank you so much. And uh, what is your goal for 2019, Grant? My goal for 2019 is to get at least 5,000 subscribers and to grow the worm community i mean i love to watch hunting and fishing videos but i would really like to see everyone everyone needs a worm whether it's a bin or some type of worm bag you need worms it's going to do a tremendous reduction on waste going into the landfill and if everybody does it it's got to help make the world a better better place it's a multi-level effort and uh, he's on the front line of it He's definitely very knowledgeable definitely check his channel out links will be in the description thanks everyone for watching and thanks grant have a great day i want to thank you so much for letting me in your home and for letting everybody know what you do thank you so much all of his links will be in the description and also I will link throughout cards and stay tuned for the end screens because these are going to be his videos. One of them will be Grant right here eating one of these guys. Yes. <laughs> what got you into raising worms? Uh, mainly for the composting, for fertilizer. It's supposed to be a great organic fertilizer for a garden, for plants. Uh, it's supposed to make your plants stronger, healthier, uh, disease resistant, pest resistant. So I'm going to give it a try. This will be my first year using it in the garden. Uh, the composting worms will self-regulate. So if they don't have the space or the food, they will stop laying cocoons. I've had the red wigglers since August of 2018. The African night crawlers since October. I just got this. I just got the Burmy bag mammoth uh, two weeks ago. And then uh, I've had the European night crawlers for uh, six weeks now. Is there a lot of learning involved? It's a big process. I've watched a lot of videos trying to learn and uh, I think I've got it figured out. And the main resource for you has been YouTube to learn how to do it? And Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Okay. A lot of YouTube videos.
that's why as i've been mentioning a lot of times without trying to be a mentor i think that uh, in what you're doing right now you can easily become an authority as a channel uh, regardless that the name of your channel isn't branded uh, in any way relevant to the to the worms but that also gives you the freedom i feel where you can extend in any direction you want after that and uh, hopefully with a little bit help from here and there from other youtubers and from people who can share your stuff and social media you can actually grow and reach your goals not only in 2019 but in long term as well uh, one thing i wanted to ask uh, the startup process is it, is it involved a lot of money uh, to buy the actual cultures or? i bought adult worms the uh it just depends you can start for a little of nothing you know you i've got these six dollar what is this uh 66 quart okay like 66 quart tubs tub and okay you know so that's six dollars that's all i've got in that and then i bought a uh a cubic foot of peat moss okay for i think nine dollars and that's how I've many got half of how many worms can one of these support uh, i'd say starting out about a pound is good and uh a pound of adult worms a pound of adult worms or even you know the more worms you have the more cocoons you're going to get but the more room you have the more room they have to grow and the more they're going to populate and let's get back to the food what do they eat they eat our food scraps any fruits vegetables uh we do say banana peels potato peels you know if you get a half a head of lettuce that's bad that being said is there any certain food scraps that are actually bad for them something that we should avoid like citrus or something that's well not that's good? been uh, proven a myth the citrus citrus onions and peppers have been called forbidden foods for worms but there's plenty of videos showing uh that uh that's a myth i've actually it's for the first time fed citrus i do my red wiggler videos on wednesday my african nightcrawlers on thursday and he keeps a very good schedule so and whenever I, you're gonna follow it i'm gonna put a link in the description somewhere right here on the top of the screen and the europeans on friday this past thursday i did feed citrus for the first time you want to take a look and see if the worms are let's go ahead the one but it's alive because <laughs> i have not checked on it at all so this is the mammoth vermi bag the vermi bag mammoth and I put the orange pills or the half of an orange right in the corners. So the bag itself, is it fully ventilated this way? It's a breathable. Breathable bag, okay. And those are the orange peels? That's, that was a half of an orange. Okay. So... They drank the orange juice and they ran away. There's, <laughs> yep, there's one worm right there. That's a little one. That's a, that's that's a young one. Okay. Here. So it doesn't look like they've touched it yet. Well, there's a baby right in the middle there. That's what a baby worm looks like. <laughs> As my daughters would say, so cute. There's a... And because we don't have a smelly vision, just so you know, it doesn't smell bad at all. There's one right there. Actually smells kind of citrusy. Right, and a worm bin should not smell. If it has a smell... If it's, it's healthy, if it's healthy, it shouldn't smell. Right, okay. it's going to have a... Uh, smell earthy. And then I fed... How do you avoid mold? Well, mold is actually not a bad thing. Okay. The mold will help break down the foods. And that's where I fed my blend. And there. that's like a symbiosis for them. They actually utilize the fungus, right? Right. Okay. So there's a few adults and babies. And those are great for fishing, guys. That's why we're featuring Grant McIntosh on Fishy Jobs. But the... Uh, the cocoons, an adult nightcrawler, red wiggler, they can lay cocoons, you know, several a week. The African nightcrawler cocoons are definitely hard to see. They're a lot darker. Okay. I'll try to, uh, the mammoth is the biggest vermi bag you can buy. They have a max that's a half this size, and then they have a mini that's about half that size. And to learn where to get him, you're going to actually have to subscribe to Grant and go to his channel, see the links that he's going to post. Because I'm sure by the time you will be watching this video, he will have referral links to where you can buy those bags. And also different uh, foods for the worms. Pretty much everything you need so that you can set up and start composting for yourself. Right. What is this bag? This is the Red Wigglers? This is the Urban Worm Bag. And urban Worm Bag, okay. Urban Worm Bag, yep, right there. 
Okay, I'm gonna post pictures of this when I get a chance. Purple one, okay. And, uh, so this is my European, and I, you know, I shred up old newspaper, junk mail, because you need the newspaper and paper is carbon. Okay. And cellulose. The food you put in is the nitrogen. Okay. So here's. So this is how they're, bu they're building their protein from the carbon and the nitrogen. Right. And then this is a blend of eggshells, potato peels, and banana peels. I okay. just put them in the blender. There's a young one. And I did ask you that earlier. Does the ink from the newspapers affect the worms at all? Uh, as far as I've, the research I've done, most of the ink is soy based, so it should be safe. I haven't had any issues with dying off let's see right there this is a cocoon that's a cocoon actually I saw another one there there was like two of them so, so that that thing right there is a cocoon people yeah how many come out of a cocoon what did we say well 1300 <laughs> so far I've uh, I've only done one cocoon only been and that was with the red wigglers I picked out there's a good size European this is a European earthworm that right there is the ring, the white ring is called a clitellum, and okay. that's how you know they're a mature worm. Okay. And they're hermaphrodites, so there's no males and females, and they can breed between them. Is there such a thing, I've heard another thing, that uh, some of the worms, like Canadian night crowers, are actually sterile? Is there such a thing at all, or it's not true? I'm not sure about the sterile part of it, but uh, I've just heard that they have a problem reproducing in captivity, the Canadian. Could it be? <laughs> it sounds like they're big predators roaming the wild <laughs> in captivity. Right. No, but jokes aside, I think that that's one of the reasons that I've heard is that actually for some reason they're bred sterile, so that uh, you basically have to go back and buy your own. Right. So there's, there's two different cocoon. cocoons. That one's quite a bit smaller than that one. So, you know, this one might have three to five, and this one might only have one or two babies in it. Okay. So they're just single digits in a cocoon. Well, like I was saying, the only uh, cocoon only bin that I've done was on Red Wigglers. Okay. And what I did was, and I've got the video in my playlist. I will link it as well. I'll get the links for the, you guys. Uh, I took out 300 cocoons and on September 1st, on October 30th, I counted how many worms I got from those 300 cocoons and I had 592. So. 300 to 592 pretty close to two per cocoon even with uh, life lost might have been yeah uh, but that's but actually sounds... what this bin is those were my babies so this was a cocoon only mm -hmm. and now it's now it's the babies that have grown right so these are the red wigglers how often do you humidify how, how often do you spray water on, the, on uh, i do have a spray bottle i just you know typically make sure it's pink it make always sure it's helps. Pink. Typically, I'm not going to squeeze it, but if you squeeze okay. your bedding and just one drop or less, if it feels moist, you don't want it too wet. Right. But uh, So the squeeze test should feel like uh, squeezing cake? or Yeah, if, you've, if you squeeze a good handful and you just get one or two drops, that's okay. plenty. Make sure you don't squeeze the ones that already have worms in them. Right, that's what I, <laughs> what I didn't want to do. But here's the red wigglers. You know, they're quite a bit smaller. And there's actually two. Oh, that's locked interesting. Up. So these are two that are tried to reproduce and they got locked up, huh? They are mating. Okay, that's mating worms. I hope YouTube doesn't demonetize the video because it's uh, sexual content. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are locked up. That's interesting, okay. I can definitely say I've never seen something like that. No, I have. Back home, I have actually. Yeah, they are intertwined. Okay, so this um, is when they exchange, uh, what is it called, spermatophora, or how, how is it called, the material that they exchange? I'm not sure the word for it. I, I no, used to just... know it. We'll find out. I'll put it in the description. The different terms and tag words that you can actually use to find these videos. Okay. So how many do you guess are in here, 500? Well, I started with 592 because I counted every single right. one of them. I actually started in a smaller bin. And uh, so I know there's at least 592 put in here, but that was October 
30th. So here we are almost to the end of January and there's one cocoon on my thumb there. They're quite a bit smaller. There's several yeah, they, cocoons They also in seem here. to be firmer and a little bit different shape because the one from the the bigger bin those look like they're kind of more egg shaped right and these look like they have like little pointy ends but they also have the the clitellum on them so what is the test that you have to tell you that the compost is ready to use in your garden or to to further use like when you actually take the worms out and you feel like okay this is ready to go in the garden how do you decide um so far i haven't had these long enough to do any but the worm factory 360 that's over there it is supposed to be a self or an upward migration composting bin system okay so what happens here is you start out with a tray on the bottom so it's almost like a beehive it's like this it's got holes in the bottom okay. where you can, where the worms can go up through. You start your next tray, and the worms are supposed to migrate up into the top tray because they find the food there. Right. You okay. always feed on the top tray. Okay. So what I did was uh, a week before last, I had my bottom two trays had they were nothing but castings. Okay. So everything's pretty much broke down. There's one little piece of paper, okay. Paper, but I mean it's basically all So castings. this is kind of uh, final product is called castings. The, the worm. So basically castings. whatever's passed through the worms. Yes. Okay. So that's that's all castings. Well, what happened was uh, there were still worms. The upward migration doesn't work quite like it's supposed to. Okay. So how do you so solve I, that problem? What I did, I poked holes in the styrofoam cup all the way around it. This is a worm trap, people. It's a worm trap. And I put the food in there, hoping that the worms would go into it, so I wouldn't have to pick them all out. All yeah. right, so there, look. Look at all them worms that have gone into that trap. Works like a charm. They just smell the food and find the food through the holes, and now I don't have to pick them all out. You learned it here on Grand Macintosh. I have another question now, obviously lots of questions. Now styrofoam, obviously it uh, takes forever to dissolve. So I'm guessing you reuse the trap? Oh yes. Okay. Yes. That's a great way to, to keep going with it. And then with, with styrofoam you cannot really control the humidity inside. So do you add water to the bottom of it or how does it uh, maintain its... Uh... I actually just, the food that I put in there, the uh, ground up bananas and banana okay. peels and stuff. I mean it's, you can see how moist that is. Right, that, it's, that's going to be enough of moisture. To, to create. So then, you know, just take the trap out of there and put your worms in here. There's a few on the outside even. Now, I see also on that, uh, on the bottom of that, there is a little drain siphon. Yes. Uh, now, that actually, you use it when there's excess water. I've actually just got it open. So, okay, it stays open all so the time. So it stays open. If I feed too wet, then the moisture automatically comes out the bottom. It's, it's got a bottom tray. This okay. actually comes with a... See, there's even worms down in the bottom there. Interesting, okay. But there's a little worm ladder is what they call it, so where the worms can crawl up and get like in. It's like a foil pen on the bottom. <laughs> right. Now this is made of plastic, like a pliable plastic, okay. So it's like how many, up to how many trays of those can you use? Uh, when I bought it, it only came with four. You can actually buy extra trays. But from what I found, the about the time you want to start a new tray is about a month. So Within a month, you want to uh, jump on a new that's tray. That's how it's been for me. You know, four to five weeks, start a new tray. And whatever's in the lowest tray will come here. Mm -hmm. And then this final product is basically 
compost castings that you can use in your garden or in your flower pots or uh, if you're on a bigger scale probably you can actually sell it I'm sure at some Definitely. point uh, it's called black gold for I've a reason it, yes it goes anywhere from uh, $10 a square foot up to people that call theirs premium black gold for two thousand dollars a square foot cubic foot. a cubic foot okay. yes cubic foot yep but you can also a lot of people make worm tea where you put uh put the castings in a either a cheesecloth or pantyhose but you uh put it in a, a bucket i will be making a video of that probably in a few months when I'm ready to do my garden and you just aerate it and you can feed it uh, black strap molasses sulfur free okay and that helps feed the so basically microorganisms glucose add some sort of cheap glucose that you can transfer Correct. into the food chain and then you just use what's called once you make your worm tea and just water your plants with the worm tea but uh, I've also, from the research I've done and uh, some research from the University of South Carolina, I believe, they've got a big uh, vermiculture studies and 30% castings seems to be the ideal number, you know, so... So you ver don't want ver you vermiculture don't is the Latin name for wor uh, growing worms, correct? Right, the, the whole process of growing worms, raising worms, and but uh, you don't definitely don't want to use a hundred percent castings. From every research I've seen, thirty percent seems to be the key number. It's gonna be too nitrogen rich if it's hundred percent, right? To I guess to everything because see your numbers on a fert like a store bought fertilizer. It's what nat uh, nitrogen, potassium. And uh, is it phosphorus? Phosphorus. So it's even sulfur, but like all the minerals, obviously, would be too high. That's why that uh, worm tea is actually concentrated, and you have to dilute it, right? Right. Because it's going to be too strong. It might kill the root system of the plant. And uh, if, in case people are wondering about uh, who actually buys stuff like that, well, imagine countries out in desert environment, countries that actually are buying topsoil from places like Iowa. To them, this is literally black gold, kind of like the petroleum that they have, but they don't have the fertilizer friendly and the fertile soil that we are blessed with. So this is places that actually will buy stuff like that, which is one man's trash, another man's gold is exactly what this is. Yes. So that's why people get involved in processes like this. And you know the question that's coming right now, and everybody's going to be wondering about it. What, the, what does a worm taste like? Well, uh, if you don't chew it up, it doesn't have much of a taste. But uh, if you chew it up, it's got a bit of a twang to it. So for people who don't know why I'm asking this, I will link his video. To celebrate reaching a thousand subscribers on YouTube, Grant decided to be a maverick and eat a worm in one of his live streams. Yes. <laughs> and that actually caused the <laughs> haywire effect. A lot of kids out there decided to follow up. And how did that end? Up? What happened? They, well, it was actually suggested by uh, uh, Jimmy C. Well, shout Another, out to Jimmy C. Jimmy C. with friends. He it was his suggestion, and it just took off. And uh, you know, I couldn't back down. I really did not want to eat one of my worms, but uh, the crazy worm lady she got me started into the worms and helped helped me out a bunch. It was her suggestion for it to be an African night crawler. So. I hit my thousand by my deadline and she actually ate a worm with me on my live stream so nothing I want to do again <laughs> but to please the fans I did it once but wait there is more it wasn't just once how many did you actually eat so I, during the live stream I, the first one I just slid down my throat I uh, was suggested that I chew one up so I said for 200 likes 200 thumbs up I would eat another one and chew it up and I got the 200 thumbs up 
So that's how I know chewing one up tastes a little tangy. So how did that taste? Earthy and then what what was the bypass? <laughs> what, what other tastes were there involved? Flavors? <laughs> it was, it I'm sorry you have to be reminded of it, but let us know. It was just the twang is the best I could uh, kind of like a like dirt I would imagine it would taste <laughs> like but nothing I want to do again for sure and very understandable now again I want to praise you for your in-depth knowledge of the subject and I really wish one day you realize that you can definitely become an authority on this subject not only on YouTube but on other social media as well hopefully one day you'll have your own website your own line of products that are involved in this process like hopefully guys like this vermi bag place or the guys like the urban bag or mm -hmm. the go green worm factory people like that should turn to a person like Grant and have him test out their products advertise them to others for at this point obviously my suggestion is go on Amazon make a account of an affiliate and then post the links each and every one of these things can bring you upwards of six to ten percent commission when it sells and it doesn't have to be an immediate sale people will be interested they'll look at it and the link will stay there anything they find on Amazon will still go on you as an right. affiliate link well I'm actually an affiliate with the urban worm bag excellent I have not signed up to be an affiliate with the vermi bag but i am planning on doing that so if there's a specific code that grant has for you to get a discount on a urban worm bag i will get it from him so you can use it and actually he'll help you out and you'll be helping him out in the long term uh, he is very knowledgeable he's also very good in front of a camera i've praised him for it in the past and uh, he'll have some uh, different level news in the near future uh, I've told him plenty of times that uh, to be successful on and off YouTube you need to get some quality haters obviously he's getting at that level because he's getting surprisingly good haters which uh, doesn't give them any uh, praise it only makes them worse people to begin with but uh, just so they know we will overcome and their hate and their actions will only harm them in the long run I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to really thank Grant for allowing me in his home. No problem. And getting over the fact that I might have been a serial killer. <laughs> I really want to thank you, Grant. I hope that uh, we get to work in the future and develop uh, uh, a good relationship. And do you want to take a moment and talk a little bit about your fish? Uh, see, this is like a bait tank, is yeah, it? Yeah, this is, uh, I've got some three golden shiners in there. Just some regular minnows trying to see if they'll multiply it's probably not something you want to put in your video because it's pretty nasty it's all right <laughs> and this is a saltwater tank i've got one little clown fish in there it's uh we had a saltwater store over in paducah okay i could just you know 20 minutes away and they closed down so i haven't really done much with it lately i got a question for you the filtered droppings of the fish, the algae from the scrapings from the walls, is that anything that the worms could utilize? I would say they could. I would say. I mean, not for the salt water okay. because you don't want to put salt in your... You want to avoid salt avo in, avo in the... Avoid salt at all costs for worms. Say it would be like putting salt on a slug. Okay. And just melt them. And uh, it would destroy their outer... Uh, slime and, yes. and basically it will hurt your skin uh, yep. one other quick question that I have uh, mentioning don't use any salt what about uh, the pH of the water that you have to use do you have to use like rain water do you have to use uh, distilled water do you have to avoid hard water anything like that we've got moderately hard water uh, it's about 240 to 220 parts per million okay and I haven't had any problem with it. We do have uh, fluoride and chlorine in our water here at the, the city water, but uh, I just put it in a an old jug and let it aerate. Let the air okay, evaporate. take care of the chlorine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So immediate chlorine obviously will not be advised, but I'm guessing if you don't have an option, I would always say probably rainwater would be a good choice. Oh yes, definitely rainwater. Uh, maybe melt some snow in the winter or whatever it is something that nature has processed already for you uh, I know Grant has to go to work 
unfortunately he's not a full-time worm raising mogul yet so we do have day jobs we have to get back on with our day i want to thank everyone for watching i'm gonna pop this off a little bit so we can actually take a thank you so much for watching have a great day do what you love and love what you do because life is way too short much love